excited again this morning to be here. We have a small group here this morning, a few brave souls, we brave the weather. My home, we got probably about five inches of snow this morning. Uh, ready to go play in the snow and stuff, four by four it, but really actually the roads are just wet and bare, so. <clears throat> My dad is 81, saw the snow and decided he was gonna keep snug in bed, so. That's okay, I can respect that, 81 years old. <clears throat> now we're getting into chapter 14, verse one. If you remember again, chapters 12, 13, and, four, 12 and 13, now into 14, you normally have my chart up here. We're getting into chapter 14. A lot of these things could kind of get condensed really quickly, 12, 13, and 14, and now we're here into the lamb and the 144,000. So I'm gonna change that little title up there. I, I know you can't change it up there, but I'd like it to say the church triumphs. That's kind of my word. As I read through this, um, you and I, it shows the triumph in him, in the church. So I'm gonna open and pray before we get started. Father, again, we just want to say thank you. We want to humble ourselves this morning, stand here as I teach your people in the deaf community, some hearing, get a voice interpreter. We want to lift up your name. And in chapter 14, we celebrate your victory. You are the same yesterday, today, and forever, and you are always on the throne. You have given Satan certain powers for a temporary time, but it is you that is in control. And I want to thank you. Bless each person here in this room and online. We lift up your name. Amen. The church triumphs. Here it says the lamb and 144,000. And the lamb we know is Jesus. Some of you even tried to debate me about that. Okay, that's fine, but come on, the Lamb is Jesus. The 144,000 are who? Jews. 12,000 from the 12 tribes. It's important to remember that. All Jews, yes. Someone questioned me, all Jews, yes. He hadn't caught it yet. <coughs> we can review, you can review some of the back stuff. You'll notice that the 12,000 from each of the tribes, when we review it, can you back up a little? I got lost. <laughs> he asked me 144,000 Jews, all Jews, yes. 144,000. This is really a review. John is kind of doing a review here through these chapters. And he's reviewing again the different visions and the pictures all in that time. Okay, in that timeline. So let's go. Uh, we'll let the scripture speak for itself. If you have any more questions before I go on. Okay, good. And John is I, and he says, I looked, and lo, I mean, sure enough, vision, a lamb stood. Jesus is giving a picture of prophecy to John, and John is, sees a lamb on the Mount, Mount Sion. Where's Mount Sion? I only recently learned as I was doing some studying in that area. It's an important mountain to the Jews. It has very important significance, so keep that in the back of your mind. <clears throat> and with him, it gives you a hint who's with him, the 144,000, 
the lamb and 144,000, Jesus and 144,000. So during tribulation, remember those 144,000. And so we're going to see what goes on as he reviews the prophecy here about things that haven't happened yet. So I'm trying to figure out where we're at here and there, here and there. This event itself has not happened yet. So we're in tribulation. John has a vision for the future of what will happen. Okay. Some people kind of get that mixed up, but this week people have asked me, I've been trying to buy ask my answer questions to clarify but so let's continue on having his father's name written on their foreheads those who have accepted Christ names written on their foreheads 144,000 they're a remnant they're, they're labeled as being a remnant remnant Jews who have accepted Christ If you study the history of the Bible, John always had a habit of doing things his own way. And so when John sees this in his lifetime, the Jews were very rebellious against the Romans. But now here we have Jews being saved. If you can really understand kind of the comparison. For me, I hope you catch it. So let's read on. And it says, And I heard a voice from heaven. Someone had a question. S I O N. Okay, good question. Rod asked me about Sion. Should be Z I O N or S I O N? King James Version spells it S-I-O-N. Z-I-O-N really is the same mountain. Same mountain. You'll see it. Good catch. So you see the significant you see the significance of what I was talking about. So anyways. A voice from heaven. He's getting a vision and he hears a voice from heaven, the sound of many waters. For me, I'm hard of hearing. I can tell a little bit, you know, a little experience. My home, if you've never been in my home right now, especially right now with all the rain and everything, there's a river close by, the Lewis River, and I can sit on my front porch and and right now I've got my hearing aids off, but when, I'm, when they're on at home, I can hear that river going by. It's a beautiful sound. Again, I know a lot of people can't hear no matter what, but sound of many waters. <clears throat> Able to pierce your heart. Kind of that picture as John was listening to it in awe. And a voice of a great thunder, very loud and clear. And I heard the voice of harpers harping on their harps. Musicians. To be honest with myself, for me, I, I don't care for the sound of harps. For me, I can't stand it. Other people say it's beautiful, but for me, I don't know why, but the sound of it is just terrible for me. But for other people, I like drums, get a beat, can feel it. I'm just, you know, to me the harp, it's an interesting instrument. All by itself though, it's, I struggle, it's because of my hearing. <clears throat> but Jesus' voice as he speaks to John is beautiful. As we hear from him, I don't know if, have you ever watched the news this week? Since about February 3rd or 4th, College campus, 
Ashbury in Kentucky, Asbury in Kentucky, a revival going on live. And I was watching it by myself. I was watching it was on and um, God moving in that church there in Asbury, the college campus. If you know me, I like to think about the past and the future and Jesus says he's going to pour out a spirit upon all men, on the young, on the young people, on the youth. And I just kind of weeped as I saw what was going on in Asbury, and Kentucky. And the, my prayer is that that would impact all college campuses around the globe. And that's going on in Kentucky. But the point of being is what John is hearing, his voice, sound of music, as we talk about scripture and singing and all that stuff, it just continues on and on. It's been going on for two weeks, I think, in that revival. Byron, you have a question. Also revival, day and night, going on. Other states, too. Remember a couple weeks ago, we were talking about labor pains as a visual example and talking about Israel, Jerusalem, getting, when the time gets close. When I look at Asbury, what's going on Asbury, that's to me another labor pain, a sign. As Christ says, I will pour out my spirit on the young, on the youth, and give them visions. I don't want to get messed up, but we'll give the men dreams and visions and it's an example of labor pains is a close time, but he's going to be coming soon. There are many things going on that is a sign of that. It just, the hair on my arm just stands up. You had a question on the 700 Club. They were talking about Asbury. Yeah, it was been on the news, yeah. Some people labeled it false and fake and stuff and but I just, whatever, roll my eyes, Some, or other people roll their eyes, but I watched it for a couple hours. I was very inspired by the movement. Thank you, Lord, for touching the, young, the youth at that college. And they sung as if it were a new song. The Lamb and 144,000 singing a new song before the throne. And before the four beasts and elders, and no man could learn the song. So as they're saying, we couldn't we couldn't learn it. But again, it's specifically, you know, it's finally what's going to happen. Finally, many of Jews have accepted Christ. It's their celebration. It's kind of a picture of that. The song, but. The 144,000 which were redeemed from the earth. <clears throat> this shows a church triumph. It speaks to the Jewish people. 144,000 finally accepting Christ in heaven as a remnant, singing before the throne. And it shows how powerful he is. We continue to read. I'm going to show you what it talks about the Gentiles, you and I. We're in this back here in the church age. If you remember my chart here, and this is ahead, so. <clears throat> These are they which were not defiled with women. They weren't shacking up, they weren't doing things, but they, for they were virgins. <clears throat> These are they which follow the Lamb wherever he goes. 144,000 following Jesus. These were the redeemed from among men. Hundred and forty four thousand were men from the earth. 
they were Jews that at first rebelled but then accepted Christ being the first fruits unto God and unto the Lamb the hell is a remnant together it's God's sheep <clears> that <throat> 144,000 has been set aside and they're saved And in her mouth was found no guile. The word mean guile means um, there was no f filth or hate or, but pure speech. For they are without fault before the throne of God. Byron, you had a question. 144,000 Jews. He asked me, are 144,000 the first and last? In the tribulation time, in the first three and a half years, it focused on them. They had became witnesses. Then they became witnesses. If you look back and look forward, you're going to see all these things happening quickly. kind of cool to me as I look we look way in the future but if you look in the history of the Jews like the past present and future is kind of a concept of a three things going on at once that hard to explain as all these things are going on past now present and the future so hard to explain Now they put an art title here. I'm going to change this title, but anyways. Here it says the messages of the three angels. What are you talking about angels? But before I jump ahead, did anyone this week read ahead? I know if Stan was here, he'd say he read ahead. Anybody else? Any, you read thir or 14, all 14? Three angels are what? What were the three angels? Can you explain what they were? Ah, put it on the spot. Okay, that's okay. <clears throat> Someone had a good question. Um, oh, 144,000 Jews. Um, Are they in New York? <laughs> that's funny. Um, Billy was saying 144,000 Jews, where'd they come from? New York? The Bible says all over, from all over the world. I asked you a question, Nick asked me, did the Jews all flock to one place? Well, right now, I think I understand your question. The Jews right now, many are flocking back to Israel. But for now, I would say, in like in, you know, the Jews were scattered for a thousand, like a thousand years, and he's bringing them back to Israel. In the last, the 144,000 saved will be in one place. But I understand they came from different places, different countries, scattered and coming back. So that's kind of the picture. I don't know if that answers your question, but. In the past, the Jewish people lived there or were scattered and then later finally brought back, right? Okay. When you back and back up even farther and farther in history, the Jews that were scattered would still have to pay taxes. Remember Mary and Joseph for the census being called back to their hometown, and they would come and go and come and go. If you know the history, but. <laughs> I think most of you know, for example, the situation that Jews were scattered in the Old Testament. 
and they really came back, and the labor pains started. And the scripture prophesied they would come back in Isaiah and other places. But here it shows that the Jews coming back to a specific place. So to answer all three of your questions, the Jews were scattered, were, were together, were scattered, and now are coming back to Israel. Rapture happens, tribulation begins, it happens to those Jews, many accept Christ, become witnesses for him. And those who are left behind also will witness. And there will be those two witnesses that are sent by God. They're talking about like it's the olive tree. The two people, we're not sure exactly who they are. We're some ideas, but that kind of summarizes the picture. Did Jews come back? Is God calling him back or? Yes, basically your an the answer is yes. It, like Jim brought up last week, I was trying to bring together a couple of questions here. Okay, he's going to back up because Jim was missing it a little bit here. So, I'm trying to catch up with the voice here. He asked me, are the Jews called by God to go back to as a Jewish nation? I said, yes. And to answer your question, you were trying to, oh, was God, did God prepare it beforehand? Were the Jews being s saved? I still don't get it. Dana? <laughs> I still don't get it. I'm missing something. <laughs> so poor Jim. It's a challenge. Um, voice interpreter is trying to get it all and he's trying to figure this out so trying to back up this part the past present and the future and that's why people are asking me questions and trying to get it straight talk about the past and the future all being included in this one paragraph okay so again Dana Asked me, did God call the Jews to come back? The answer is yes. Now, with that said, I, you and Dana had questions last week about, oh, the was the has the Antichrist, Antichrist already been established right now? Talk about the Antichrist. And 144,000 planned before it started. Yes, these were all planned before it started. You will notice in the Jews and the plan of salvation, it's always been there in the Old Testament in the past. That's what I was trying to emphasize, is God's plan has always been there in the past. The Jewish nation has always been uh, valuable or treasured by God and called, and it's been established. So we can show you in the book of Daniel, in the book of Isaiah. Okay, got it. In the name of Jesus, okay. Me wisdom as I go forward. Sometimes Satan likes to interrupt things and get things messed up, but all right, in his name.
I love this part again, we go into the past, the present, the future, it all kind of gets all raveled into it. The messages of the three angels, and remember you read ahead, so maybe you're excited about this. And I saw, John saw another angel fly in the midst of heaven. <clears throat> Having the everlasting gospel. If you look in your, in your Bible, my Bible here on my phone, the gospel, the word of God, having the everlasting gospel to preach unto them that dwell upon the earth. So now we're up on, up on, up on the earth. We were down in heaven. Now we're back down on the earth here. You know, Jim, who's voice interpreting, trying to figure out where James is going. He gets a little bit lost, but... We were in heaven for a little while, now we're back down here on earth. So it's easy to kind of overlook things, but, but for myself, when I was in my 20s, I would read this stuff and I, I thought it was a little bit crazy. I was almost ready just to give up on it. It was too much for me, that close to it. <clears throat> my ADHD, it was too much for my ADHD, but thank God. I would still think about it, curious, my curiosity would stay within me and my heart. And his message really uh, pierced me as I read it, it took me back and changed my life forever. But Satan works overtime to try to make me put it aside, but I won't do it. <clears throat> I get emotional and I'm thankful for that. And today I have a lot of confidence with it. And I know that maybe you struggle a little bit with it too, and that's okay. The, world is par the word is powerful. But he, he'll do what he says he's going to do. Trust that 100%. So let's move on. To preach unto them that dwell on the earth and to every nation, kindred, tongue, and people. The goal of the gospel is to is for every nation, every background, every tongue, language, people. <clears throat> the gospel is to be spread around the entire globe. This God's desire that not one would perish without him. I mean, Jim says it, or James, you say, James says it all the time over and over and over, but yeah, I confess, yeah, I have ADHD. I've never had that formal diagnosis, but I know it in my heart. Crazy old guy. <clears throat> the point is, thankful that he is repetitive to me enough. That his word becomes my best friend. And hopefully some of you, I won't name names, but there are a few people here, maybe they're not sitting here today, because I said, James, I can't stand it, you're so repetitive, but no, well, okay. I can respect that. Dear people to me. But for me, I thank the Lord that my mind is weak. <laughs> he sees a difference in me. And he likes it to be repetitive. Right, this is during, he asked me, the three angels are preaching, is this during tribulation? Yes. Past, present. But here they're, pre, they're in, in tribulation, call it whatever you want, preaching or whatever. Are they preaching to the 144,000? No, that was... 144,000 have triumphed. They're in heaven. Now we're back down to the earth, 144,000. This is the angels preaching while what, was, while what was going on in heaven, now this is what is going on on earth. This is where people get a little confused and I get a lot lost, but people get lost. Right. So they're in heaven. So it's just, I 
a little bit confusing, but let's just continue on reading. Hopefully, hopefully you'll catch it. So as I'm kind of getting stuck up by a lot of the questions and Jim's trying to stutter along. <laughs> I know, <laughs> it's been a challenge. People at ADHD get up real excited. And I get all excited. I know the answer and what's going to come, what's coming up here, but people are asking me a lot of questions. I kind of get disjointed and how do I slow my mind down? So uh, that's exactly me. You're right. I struggle with that area. They asked me, <laughs> what's the point? <laughs> Get to the point, okay. The point is, past, present, future, all in one, that's the point. In heaven, we see the triumph and the celebration going on in heaven. Now all of a sudden John's on earth and what's going on on earth? So it kind of gives you these pic pictures, past, present, future, uh, of what John is experiencing. He is doing a review. This really started in 12, 13, 14, and 15, a review for John. But as you can see, the review for you and I, we've been reading all along for five months. So why is he getting a review since we've looked at it already, it seems. I like it, but people say, what for? What for? Why is John constantly going back to things? It's for John's sake, the author. At first, the visions are in the future. <coughs> the three and a half years in tribulation. And now we're jumping back to the He's talking about the past again. So I hopefully a little bit of a review. Don't give up. We're going to keep reading and hopefully it'll clarify itself. This is John's review. His church triumphs. So remember those things. So let's move on. Saying with a loud voice, Not like with fear, but with respect. Fear God, respect God. Not like a dog with his ears back, no. Not that kind. When you say fear God, I mean, we can have a good, healthy fear of God here, but here we're talking about respect, and it says, give glory to him. For the hour of his judgment has come Finally, judgment. Remember on our chart, the seven scrolls, his wrath. A lot of people had a lot of debate saying, James, you mean Jesus is mean, he has wrath on people. I say, yeah. People say, no, Jesus is love. And people start that debate and try to don't shoot the messenger, just this is what God's word says. I'm, I'm just the messenger of what God's word, it's very clear what it says here. And it talks about the wrath of the seven bowls and the consequences and uh, those people who do not accept Christ. If you have Christ in your life, you're fine, but if you don't, and you persecute on Christians and give them a hard time, you better now Get ready here on earth. Speaking to whoever you are. We love you. We pray for you. But when I look here in the end, I'm sorry. The consequences will be there again as we read on. The hour of judgment has come. Let's give the seven bowls of wrath and worship. Him that made heaven. We're going to worship God who made heaven. 
now it's time for his judgment. The souls under the altar who have been saying, Hurry, God, when is the time of our vengeance? My question was, why didn't you do it right there that minute? Again, the reason he didn't do it right when the souls under the altar were asking for it is an opportunity for people to know Christ. Once again, to give people an opportunity to repent and to accept Christ. Remember the souls under the altar saying, now is the time for revenge, and God says, wait. Just to wait, because he has other things to do yet. And he's trying to give people a chance to be saved, that none would be pierced. That was the reason. I hope that becomes clear. Okay. And worship him that made heaven and earth and the sea and the fountains of the waters. And who made everything? Go back all the way to Genesis. We praise him. He's done everything, made everything for us. <coughs> now another angel says, And there followed another angel saying, Babylon. Babylon has fallen. What's Babylon? Help me what that could be, Babylon. What's it representative of? Someone help me. Somebody said it's a city, name of a city, full of sin. Rod said Babylon is a city full of sin. Okay. It's fallen. It's almost like a picture in the Old Testament. Remember Sodom and Gomorrah and those cities. Kind of a, a parallel picture of those things. I'll let the scripture speak for itself. It says, It's fallen, it's fallen, that great city. Again, we're in tribulation. I know you're trying to remember where we're at, but we're in tribulation here now. Because she has made all of the nations drink of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. I'm going to summarize that. Antichrist. The first beast, remember, shows up, takes control of many of the cities and the people, are put under them. We talked about the 666. Those who do not accept the number will probably be martyred, souls taken up into heaven. If you don't know Christ, there's going to be a real separation here. Because she made all the nations... Drink of the wrath with her. I mean, get involved with the Antichrist. Talking about that city, Babylon. The Antichrist is drawing people in and people just falling for her. Drinking of the wine of her wrath, of her fornication. Not just think about like a sexual fornication, we're talking about anything, you name it, sin is included here, the wrath of her fornication. Some people would just say sin, period, here. So we continue to read, and the third angel followed him, saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast, remember the 666, and his image, so the Antichrist, and the second beast, remember the image, the false prophet, those, those two things, the beast, the Antichrist, and his image, false prophet. <clears throat> remember, think about Jesus dying on the cross, rising. So remember, the Antichrist went through kind of that same concept, that same picture. Said, suppose during tribulation I refuse to accept the number of the beast. The Bible says in several places, those who don't accept the mark of the beast will probably be martyred, killed, beheaded, whatever, just to put the fear in those other people to force them to take the mark of the beast. The 
Bible says kill. It uses the word kill, but what that means, I don't know how it's going to happen. Beheaded, I, different ways, whatever. Kill, beheaded, whatever. If nothing happens to you, you're going to have to suffer your way through the earth. But again, me, there's, I think there's still going to be some underground Christians left behind supporting one another. Point is, if you don't accept Christ, you don't accept the mark, or if you accept Christ, you don't have the mark of the beast. Or if you accept the mark of the beast, you'll be killed. It's going to be so difficult for you to get food and things like that if you don't if you don't accept the mark of the beast. I mean, we live in a lot of comfort here in our nation. Compared to what's going to happen in tribulation, it's going to be very difficult. Obviously, we just kind of sit back and. Other countries have a little bit different experience, but if any man worship the beast in his image and receive his mark in his forehead or in his hand, talking about the forehead and hand receive the mark of the beast. We think of the six six six. We use that for the sign of the mark of the beast. But <clears throat> again, if you have Christ in your heart, you have nothing to worry about. It's just scary stuff, but with Christ in your heart, you don't have to worry about it. <clears throat> Billy asked me why number 666, what all that is, and the number and everything. <clears throat> I'm careful here because this area, you know, there's a lot of, we can go a lot of digging and things like that. I'd probably lose most of you, but... To keep it simple, the point, the 666 is equal to the number of the Antichrist, the person, the Antichrist, that will eventually show up here. It's going to be, his name is equal to that number in some way, shape, or form. So for now... You know, I could just go crazy in, in depth, and I could probably in depth and lose the interpreter and everything. But <coughs> it's important. It's the mark of the. It's the number of the Antichrist, Rod. Remember, way back in the Jews were marked in concentration camps, were given numbers and stuff like that. Yeah. As far as the Antichrist is, once you've been marked by the Antichrist, you've, you've got that mark. I guess you become a prisoner of war of the Antichrist at that point. You, you become a, under the flag of the Antichrist. There's, you know, when we think of Vietnam and stuff like that, there were a lot of POWs and there's so I kind of think of the picture, once you take the mark of the beast, you've accepted, you can't back out of that. You can't, whoops, I made a mistake on that. Once you've accepted the mark of the beast, it's too late. So. Those with the mark of the beast, drink of the wine of the wrath. All the consequences will be given to you who follow the Antichrist. The same that shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God. Think of the seven bowls. The wrath of God. Those that have not accepted Christ. Those who do not follow Christ will experience the seven bowls. There are not going to be, again, we think terrible, but it's those who have not accepted Christ will experience this. The wrath of God. Some people say, oh, these are seven bowls of wrath. The wrath of God. Not Satan, of God. It shows you, I'm the messenger, remember this. People say, oh no, God would never do that. Jesus loves everybody, God loves everybody, he would never send a wrath. 
But we look right here. Please, this is what it says. It's the wrath of God. That debate, it's not there. It's very clear. The seven bowls, his wrath is, his wrath is soon to be given out, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation. It's going to be poured out. And I think about uh, Jiminy looks at me, what he's talking about in his background in science. And he likes to pour things and put things together as a chemist. <laughs> I think he was cra crazy, love him, but not my thing. <laughs> putting chemicals together and stuff like that. And I think about this picture here of God just putting together his wrath, stirring it up into a bowl, being ready to be poured out. And what's included into that wrath. And that kind of a picture of a mad scientist. <laughs> that Jim, like Jim. So it's going to be poured out his wrath of indignation. And she'll be tormented with fire and with brimstone. Even in the end, we see Satan. We talk about, we see fire and brimstone and all this stuff. We know that Satan will end up in hell, fire and brimstone for eternity. It's going to be poured out and it's going to be given consequences, even eternity in hell forever. <clears throat> tormented, tormented brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. The angels, Jesus, are going to watch it. They can't escape. They're going to be there to see it. Satan right now, it looks like, if you look today, it looks like what's going on in the world, Satan's going to win. But if you hold on to God, your prayers, your life, he's not going to ignore you. He's going to bring you in. Amen. It says, then the smoke of their torment ascends up. The torment continues on and on forever and ever. <coughs> smoke of their torment ascends up forever and ever. And it never stops. Again, example here, several times we talk about smoke rising up. As you know, I live up in the Yakold area. If I bring up a picture, I have maybe five to six inches of snow this morning. And I was looking out upon it, beautiful snow this morning. But my neighbor on both sides got a nice fireplace. And outside I could just smell the nice aroma of the smell, smoke from the fireplaces coming from the neighbors keep his house warm on both sides. They have nice pot belly stoves, wood stoves on both sides. I'm a redneck boy, yeah, but <clears throat> my whole house, I have electric. I don't have a fireplace. I have fire pit outside, but inside the house I have electric. If my electric went off tomorrow, what would I do? Neighbors would laugh, they have a nice pot belly stove. They tease me. I think about the smoke ascending up from, from hell forever and ever. Think about the picture I just gave you, the smoke that continually rises up. They have no rest day or night. The point is, <clears throat> once Satan and those who have not accepted Christ have been put there, they will never rest, day or night. They will suffer for eternity. Those who worship the beast and his image, they will never, never be able to rest. We know Christ will be walking on streets of gold. And the Bible in Revelation 21 will expand upon that, what heaven is going to be like. 
That's my favorite part of Revelation. Unless you see the story and the tattoos on my arm about that. So, Brian, Byron, you have a question? And the smoke rising up is kind of a continuous symbol of just being continuous. Yeah, that can apply. It keeps going. The smoke rises. <clears throat> it's a reminder that Jesus is keeping his word. But if we knew, when we're looking at this big picture, after tribulation, after the thousand year reign, and I'm putting a hint out there, Satan will be released out of hell for a brief time, for a season, it says. And people get what? James, what? <coughs> FYI, yeah. We'll get to that. Not to scare you. He will end up there for eternity. Again, we're jumping past, present, future, past, present, future, and it gets all kind of mangled up. And right now, the poor voice interpreter gets a little bit lost of where we're at. It's a bit of a challenge. There is going to be a thousand year of rain where he's released for a brief time. So we'll get to that anyways. And whoever receives the mark of the beast of his name so those who have the mark of the beast, who have not yet accepted Christ, they will be eternally punished forever, and they can't back out of that. Those who have Christ, it says, those who have been patient, the saints that have held on, that have not given up, Looking back, and they that keep the commandments of God, those who have given up, and the faith of Jesus, follow his commandments. And having faith in Christ, continue not to give up. Move that up a bit here. Now, I'm excited to get down to that part. I'm not sure we'll get, have enough time for that, but... <clears throat> and I heard a voice from heaven. <clears throat> John was writing. And I'm sure for me, I can't imagine, maybe you too, I don't know. John, in some ways, was probably just writing with his mouth open in awe, overwhelmed with everything he's seeing and all the information he was getting. How long did John write? You know, what that, there's a lot of even debate about that. They have a lot of discussion and debate about that. Imagine what John's thought process was. That's when, I, when I get into heaven, I want to sit down with John and have a conversation with him. I've studied many years, and I still even struggle to understand everything, but I feel like there's even more that I need to know. I'd love to sit down with John and pick up even more of what was written. <clears throat> John saying unto me, write. Blessed are the dead which die in the Lord. Those who have accepted Christ that have passed away, they're blessed. They've been sealed in heaven. You die and you know Christ, you don't have to worry about it. You're blessed. Our dead which die in the Lord from this point on, from henceforth. What's that mean, henceforth? It means moving on. So again, it shows us in the tribulation Remember, it says, those who have ears, let them hear. Remember that line. During those three and a half years, and in the middle of it, in the tribulation, <clears throat> some people say even in the second three and a half years, you can't accept Christ. But I'm putting out there, as we go through this, it says, henceforth, it says, from this point on, 
it shows to me that there's still even, I know the, the world's going to be a mess in tribulation, and it's going to be a challenge to accept Christ. And there, if you refuse the mark of the beast and all these things, then it's going to be a real challenge to the things. But if you but if before you die and you accept Christ, you're going to make it in. This is what it's hinting at. In tribulation still, there's an opportunity there. It says, henceforth. Even with all the stuff going on, so... So a lot of different perspectives on that, and I know online I'll get a whole bunch of different perspectives and things, but henceforth, yes, the spirit, that they may rest from their work. To me, the picture to me, from Dan looking in Daniel and Isaiah and other, other, other books, he gives and gives and gives. Even today, he's giving that opportunity and an opportunity over and over to know Christ. And I hope that the whole point of Revelation, as we teach it, is to accept Christ. You can have a lot of debate and maybe some confusion in there. Maybe it's not clear. Don't accept the mark of the beast. If you're alive here, don't give up. Whatever you're facing, whatever you're going through today, accept Christ. I use myself as an example. I don't know what your story is. Maybe you've seen my son was in jail. A lot of things happened in my life. And my life is not perfect? No. I'm human, the same as you are. But by faith we hold on. Am I perfect? No. And I just hope to share it with you. We can support one another as we hold on together and have faith until the end. Perfectly. <clears throat> okay, my time is just about up. So that was the end of Okay, so when we get in here, the harvest of the earth, on the timeline, the rapture people are taken up, almost like the rapture, different. It's going to be a little different here in the harvest. The rapture will happen in the twinkling of an eye. You and I in the church will be gone. It says in the twinkling of an eye. I mean, you can't blink fast enough, it's gonna happen and people are gonna be gone. People are, people are still around, are gonna wonder what's going on, they're gonna be left behind. During the tribulation, the harvest of the people and you're gonna see what happens here and they're going to realize that they have the mark of the beast. And there's going to be a... So I hope you go home and read in chapter 14. We haven't got to 15, but read 14. I encourage you to go home and read 14, the rest of it, next week. Questions before I close real quick. Again, the point is, <clears throat> there's a lot of, John's going through a lot of review in his vision here. Past, present, future. Now John is putting these things down and is saying, blessed are those people who accept Christ from that point on, henceforth. This is the point, <clears throat> an important point. So I'll close in prayer. Father, I know today, as we look through this, it's a challenge, even for the voice interpreter a little bit, uh, jumping around and it can be a little overwhelming and I hope the people online catch it, but for really for me, I want the deaf to know first of what's going on here, to know Christ, in which we talk about the Antichrist and the Mark of the Beast. <clears throat> But it's your desire that all would know Christ and that not one should perish. As we continue on in 14, 
And we start next week, continue next week. People go home and read. We just lift it all up to you. We bring it all in and we talk about the, we'll talk about the harvest next week. Help me as I sign clearly. And next week you make it clear. Thank you again for today and your precious name, we pray. Amen. <laughs>